let's start with the problem. So this is data that I've collected from our return to learn tracker, which has been doing a lot of data tracking over the pandemic. These, this is district level data. The redder is the higher the chronic absenteeism. You really don't even want to be dark orange, much less red on this map. In 2017, we sort of had incomplete data. We have much more complete data for 2018 and 2019. Now, this is about 15% uh, chronic absenteeism. And again, chronic absenteeism is the percentage of K-12 students who are absent 10% of the school year. So that's at least 18 days. On average, it's a little higher than that. And 15% is a lot. It's not a small problem. Pre-pandemic chronic absenteeism was not a minor issue. Um, chronic absenteeism is related to just a, a bevy of negative effects. It's not complicated. I think schools are good. I think being in schools consistently is good and the data bears this out. The 2020 and 2021 data were interrupted by the pandemic not that trustworthy, but in 2022, rates skyrocketed. And you can see that here by just how red this got. Uh, at this point, chronic absenteeism increased about 90%, and it increased everywhere. I have, uh, I, I'm a data guy. I do all kinds of education data, and I've never seen anything like this. And in 2023, we don't have data for every state yet. Um, in most states, it went down, but it did not go down far enough. Um, the, this is the real threat that we're looking at now, is that chronic absenteeism doesn't go back down, that it becomes a new normal, that we're, well, it's not, it's actually not that big of a deal. Uh, it is a big deal, and we're, we're gonna need concerted effort to counter it. Hedy, and uh, you know, I have, made this claim repeatedly to lots of audiences um, that chronic absenteeism is the number one problem we're facing post-pandemic. And look, there are other problems. Uh, pandemic learning loss is a gigantic and still unfinished problem. The reason that I think chronic absenteeism is the most urgent and the top priority we should have is I don't see any route to pandemic learning loss being fixed that doesn't go through fixing this chronic absenteeism rate. I mean, we're talking about set, uh, somewhere on the order of six and a half million, six million more kids chronic absentee, uh, chronically absent post-pandemic than pre-pandemic. Six million. I mean, it's hard to imagine. Uh, when we were talking about this, Hetty, talking about how this is not just a problem for the individual students who are chronically absent, but really a productivity problem for schools. Um, you said, I have this idea for a goal that we could set out that might work across the board, cut chronic absenteeism by 50% uh, over the next five years. Uh, it's, it, there's a lot of reasons to like it. I want to talk about it. But I was immediately on board uh, precisely because I really think we need a concerted effort. Um, on this, we have a couple of things uh, here that we want to point out about this goal. First, I, I will just say it's pretty audacious, um, so it does deserve some explaining. One of the points here, Denise, aspirational, but plausible? Absolutely, aspirational. Uh, one of my favorite work, two, three words from working on the Hill was ambitious yet achievable, and this is one of those goals. We need, and look, I'm approaching this as an advocate, right? This is what EdTrust does. We build movements. And part of building a movement to cut chronic absenteeism is by having a North Star. And this is what this is about. Making sure that everybody, all stakeholders involved, can see the goal in front of them. It is ambitious yet achievable. But the most important thing to know is everybody can get behind this goal. Everybody can get behind this goal. And that's exactly what it's gonna take. I think the other thing that um, this goal says to us is it is a meaningful goal. When you look at the numbers that Hetty and Nat shared with us, the numbers that we are seeing cannot stand if we are going to attack what is uh, most definitely one of the serious challenges we have to academic achievement 
and we're gonna have to get it done. And by setting out both a goal and a timeline for getting that done, that's our North Star. That's really our North Star. I wanna start this off, Dr. Anderson, with you, uh, with a pretty simple question. Uh, and a frank one, do you think reducing chronic absenteeism by 50% in five years is actually doable? And uh, why does this goal matter to you? Uh, not only is it doable, uh, it's been done in places before. And I'll just give you some examples in terms of what this looks like. It is critical. In Topeka, we have about 78% free reduced lunch students. Um, in 2016, we had over 600 students that were homeless. When we enacted some of the services, which includes, I loved hearing, not using punitive, but investing in systems that heal, uh, we changed what um, our community looked like. And as a result of that, homelessness dropped from 600 students to 200 students, you're talking about over 50%. Now it's gone up since post uh, the pandemic, uh, but dropping more than 50%. Chronic absenteeism dropped to almost below 10% in a district with over 70% free lunch students. Now that's pre-pandemic. And so when he says 50% is an ambitious goal, uh, that is a goal that not only is ambitious, but it's one that we must have because without doing that, we won't close the equity and opportunity gaps anywhere. Uh, so I know that it can be done, it has been done. Uh, and post-pandemic, we are excited about the ambitious goal and we are back on the downward trend. So. Continue to watch Topeka. All right, so Lisa, uh, let me ask you the same question. Is it, is it doable? It's absolutely doable, and it is, a, it is a must for all of us. We know that in 2023, um, we were really digging into our data and couldn't figure out why we weren't seeing learning loss recovery. And so we looked at our data, and as we were cutting and slicing, as you data friends do every different way to Sunday, we saw one consistent factor the drop in our academics matched the drop in attendance. So if a student was chronically absent, they were 18% lower in reading on average and 25% lower in their scores in mathematics. And so what we know is we create a cycle. Kiddos don't know the work, they don't wanna to come to school, they feel like they're behind, so they get further behind. So we have to break that cycle and we have to build the capacity of our schools across the state in Virginia to make sure they have the tools and the toolkits to help re-engage our families and make sure our kiddos are coming to school every day. And Angelica in Rhode Island. Absolutely. Um, what's interesting is that we just got our data back and we have similar numbers. So last year we put out to the parents exactly that data, the impact that it has on academic performance. When parents saw the impact, the 20% gap between the kids that are chronically absent and the ones that are not, and in the upper grades, it's about 25%. How do you recover from that? If you're not in school, you can't learn. And that's been our campaign, Attendance Matters, and, and we put it out there. And what we've seen since 2021, 22 school year, we've had a 10% um, percentage point drop in chronic absenteeism. So absolutely, this last year we had a 4% but it's gonna take all of us, but the data does not lie. I know that there's conversations about working, you know, tinkering with the data, but it is unbelievably um, connected, absenteeism and um, performance. And then there's a the social emotional factor. We know that that has gone up during the pandemic. If you're not in school, you're not connected. We know what happened during the pandemic. So this is a place where kids are gonna get the services, the supports, and the connections that they need to be able to do well academically. And it will change your next year, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> and Helica, uh, the, the, the question uh, that I started with, who needs to be involved in making this a reality? Well, everyone, right? And I, I, I know that sounds like a very general, but very, in very concrete ways. One of the things that has been really important for us is you know, as we work with the governor, is all of government. So every cabinet member has a responsibility with chronic absenteeism. Our Secretary um, of Commerce uh, wrote an op-ed, wrote a letter to all the businesses. Don't hire kids during work hours, I mean during school hours. But simple as that, is your kid going to school? Every employer, we've asked every employer to talk to their staff, that's important. So everyone, the Department of Health has a responsibility. We've created um, these forms. 
you know, those of you that are parents, when you go in with your kids and they ask, you know, do, do they make eye contact? Do they do these kind of things? Now we have those forms in pediatrician's office. Has your kid been to school? How many times have they been absent? We're working on sharing that data with pediatricians. You gotta work with people that parents trust. Who are the people that parents trust? Pediatricians, the doctors, clergy, faith-based community, bringing in, when we have the statewide group, it is the Department of Health, it is pediatricians, it is the hospitals, it is, you know, our diocese. Everybody's at the table because they trust that community in a very different way.